morning to you. How are you doing this morning? I'm here in Berlin. I gave a two-day two -day seminar. Yeah, that was the first time that I gave such a long seminar. Usually I only give like a speech or maybe an hour. And funny, here's Uber. Now I'm on my way to meet a couple of startups and investors. I hope to, I can bring you along to some of them and give you some insights. I've done a video about Lisbon, a couple of videos about the Israeli startup ecosystem. And today the idea is to make one about the Berlin startup ecosystem. So enjoy. My name is Otto. Uh, I work for Partech in uh, Berlin. We are an international venture capital firm. Uh, we were originally founded in San Francisco in the 80s and uh, 37 years later we are now having offices in San Francisco, Paris, Berlin and Dakar. And uh, we are fairly stage agnostic so we invest in technology companies starting in early seat with tickets of 250,000 euros and we go all the way up to kind of growth stages where we do initial tickets of up to 40 million euros. I think the most exciting part of the Berlin startup ecosystem is that it has an international pool. In Berlin what's interesting for some reason it's on an international map of Americans, South Americans, Europeans, Asians. So a lot of people come into town to create something, to build something new, and they find their peers here, find people that are like-minded, which is also supported, I think, by the Berlin as a city, because when the wall came down in uh, 89, there was a whole kind of new area that became new and was newly created. And this vibe is still around that there is kind of something new to build upon. Berlin is cheap. And that allows people to start new things with relatively smaller budgets. And if we as investors invest money into companies to develop something, it's very helpful to do that in an environment that is significantly less expensive than other capitals. I would say there is a founder type in Germany, probably less in Berlin, but overall in Germany, that is very engineering driven, that comes from an engineering background and that wants to digitize kind of the machine world, the industrial world as it is today. There are different founder types. And I think the, the Berlin founders are within the German ecosystem, I think, particularly driven by growth and consumer topics, mm -hmm. because that's a little bit the vibe here, which doesn't mean it's always a good thing, but that's at least the environment in which they're operating in. But I wouldn't be surprised if we are living in a heavily on-demand world. If there is kind of a generation that is between 18 and 30, that finished school, that are studying, that are working on as freelancers, that are extremely flexible and they book Ubers on demand, they book housing on demand, they book jobs on demand, they book travels on demand. These digital nomads already existing, but living for them is a little bit more complex today than it will be in the future. So you have almost an app where you can book your next flat, you can book your next car for the next couple of months, you can order your food, obviously, you can run your whole life based on your, your mobile phone. And in 20 years time, maybe not even on your mobile phone anymore, but on your Siri, on your voice interface. AI is more an empowering technology in my view. It helps things to make it easier. So you'll still make your own decisions, but your suggestions that come up from the engine are spot on. AI will help us to kind of get more relevant content and options in front of us to choose. But at the end of the day, people will mostly still choose themselves. AI will change the way we are working. And there are a lot of cumbersome small processes that take a lot of time for the time being. And they're very repetitive. And these are ideal processes to be replaced by a machine. We shouldn't expect too much from it neither because it's not that easy to really optimize complex processes. Okay, that was really exciting to meet them. They have over 1 billion euros as an under management that goes directly into venture, different stages, different funds. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed like listening to him what he had to say. I sincerely enjoyed and let's go to the next one.
Uh, I'm Gary, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Fi. Fi is a digital purchasing financing platform. I'm very excited about anything related to B2B uh, services uh, such as ours and anything that helps small medium sized businesses uh, to improve uh, their day to day business. Berlin is a culturally very mixed uh, place, uh, full of diverse uh, companies, diverse products, diverse people from all over the world. I would describe it as hip ideation and execution. So I think a lot of founders have great ideas here in Berlin and also some, not all of them, are also very well in the execution of those ideas. So making them reality and actually build products that, uh, that solve a problem. I think the world's gonna become closer. So thanks to a format like this, the world is gonna be an oyster and uh, you can actually see like behavior you had in small villages in, in the past translated into much different scopes. So basically in a small village, you knew your neighbor and uh, the neighbor knew everything about you. You knew everything about uh, them. And uh, that's how you made business with each other based on trust and given more transparency more functionalities thanks to media, social media and videos and, and audios and, and much more connectivity between people. You'll start seeing the same patterns as you had like in your small village to, uh, 200 years ago, where everything, uh, everyone knew each other to some extent and everything you did was based on trust, loyalty, uh, on your personal brand, so if people trusted you or you had a good standing in your village, uh, people would go to you for advice. If not, they wouldn't. And things like rumors or negative news would spread like wildfire. And the same thing, I believe, will happen in the future. Uh, it's happening now, you know, bad news spread like wildfires these days to every corner of the world. I think artificial intelligence in 10, 20 years will improve our daily lives to a significant extent. It will help automate a lot of manual process, uh, a lot of manual labor that is currently still required, let's say for producing cars or producing machines or building homes, building airplanes. This will all be almost a full extent automated and uh, digitalized with machines that are then in turn programmed or controlled by some sort of artificial uh, logic in the bank. Now leaving the office of Phi, very good to catch up with Gary. Gary is the CEO and founder of Phi Trade. I spent a couple of months here and um, now going back to the airport, back to Zurich, back to see family. Very excited about that. Thank you so much for watching. Um, as usual, if you liked this episode and you feel like you learned something, which is the most important thing for me, that you learned something from each video, why not to subscribe? It would be really great to see you also in the next video. And as usual, if you want to send me a direct message, uh, you have my email, and my mobile, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to hear from you. Have a great day.